Hey guys, today we're going to install Docker on a Raspberry Pi. Let's take a look. Before we install anything though, what is Docker and why would I care about installing it at all? Well, it's a really popular piece of software that allows you to run your application within a thing called a container. A container is essentially a lightweight virtual machine. It allows applications to run within it without allowing them outside of the bounds of the container itself. So they don't have access to the bare metal that the container is running on. This has a number of advantages, but some of the main ones are that you can assign specific resources to a container. This means that a single application wouldn't be able to overwhelm all of the resources on your machine. You tightly control how much resource it has access to. From a security point of view, you know that the application won't have access to data that it doesn't need because it must run within the bounds of the container. And it simplifies the development process because it's a lot easier to write one Docker container than it is to rewrite your application for Linux, Windows, Raspberry Pis, and so on. So let's take a look at the install. Once we've SSH'd into our Raspberry Pi, we're going to run the following command and hit enter. As always, the commands will be in the video description down below. That's going to look like it hasn't done much, but I can assure you it most definitely has. So those of you who've installed anything on Raspbian before will be surprised that I haven't used some sort of apt-get command like apt-get docker. Unfortunately, docker doesn't support that method of installation, at least not yet. Instead, we're going to have to make use of their convenience script. What is a convenience script? Well, in this case, they've provided a shell file, a scripting file, that we can run on our Raspberry Pi and it will take care of the installation for us. That's what we've just downloaded from their website. For those of us who don't like running unknown scripts on our machines that we haven't read or written ourselves, we can actually open the file up at getdocker.com and validate that it's something that we're comfortable running. I'm not going to go through it here now, that's outside the scope of this video, but if you are interested, that's where you can read the file. Now that the script has downloaded, we need to go ahead and run it as root. So we'll go ahead and type in sudo, and then we just need to run sh and then get hyphen docker dot sh, and then we can hit enter. So here it's gonna go ahead and install the Docker software onto the Raspberry Pi. That's going to take several minutes. So through the power of YouTube editing, we can skip straight to when the script has completed. Now that the installation has completed, how do you actually install and run an application using Docker? Well, conveniently, it's a lot like using the command line. So what we're going to do here is we're going to download, install, and run a Hello World application to test that the Docker containers are actually working as intended. Docker hosts most of its applications at hub.docker.com. It's not the only place that you can get applications and you certainly don't have to host any that you write yourself on the hub, but it's a convenient place to find user-generated scripts. Once we get onto hub.docker.com, it's going to prompt you to sign up or log in, but that's not actually necessary. We can go to the search bar and we can search for the kind of application that we're looking for. We're going to use a test application called Hello World. So we're just going to go ahead and type that into the text box at the top. That's going to prompt all of the results. And the one that we're actually looking for is the official image called Hello Hyphen World. When we open that up, we can see a lot of details about it. This page is a lot like GitHub where there's a lot of uh, quick references, example configs, and comments about the application. But what we're particularly interested in here is the command at the top right. This is the command that we would use to pull the image, docker pull hello hyphen world. So we're going to go ahead and copy that link here. Back in our Raspberry Pi, we can go ahead and paste the command in and hit enter, and we'll immediately get an error that we don't have the right permissions to run this container. So what's happened here? Has there been some sort of error in the installation? Well, no. The Docker software needs a very high level of privilege to run because it needs a lot of control over the bare metal that it's running on to host those applications and allow them to do what they need to do. So here we're going to run the Docker command as a sudo, and then we're going to take a quick look at how to ensure we don't have to do that again in the future. This time we'll run sudo and then the same command again, that's docker pull hello hyphen world. And we'll see that the docker command runs successfully. It's about to pull the hello world application. That only takes a minute or two before it's downloaded and installed. And then we can go ahead and run the application. Wait, now that it's downloaded, how do I know how to run it? Well, that's where the Docker Hub comes in convenient once more. If we take a look at the references on this page, we can scroll down to the example output and find that the example run command is docker run hello world. The commands and options that you have will vary by application, so always go ahead and read the documentation to find out how to do what you're looking to do. 
Once again, so that we have the right permissions, we need to go ahead and type in sudo first, and then we're going to docker run hello world. And what we should get back according to the docker hub is in fact this hello from docker message. So that tells us that the application is running correctly and has all of the permissions and privileges to do so. I don't particularly want to have to specify the sudo command every time I'm trying to do something with Docker. So what we're going to do now is put the pi user in a group that has privileges to run Docker without using the sudo command. What's important to note here is we're still running Docker as an administrator, so it still has those elevated privileges. That's in contrast to the ability to run it rootless, which is where you're able to run Docker without using any sort of root privileges. That's out of the scope of this particular video though, so we're not going to be looking at that today. The command that we're going to run here is sudo usermod hyphen ag docker and then dollar sign user. Sudo indicates that we want to run the command as an administrator because we need the privileges to move people into and out of the group. Usermod specifies that we would like to modify a user. Hyphen ag specifies we'd like to add someone to a group. Docker is the name of the group that we'd like to add the user to. And then dollar sign user is a variable that indicates I want to do it to the user who is currently running this command. In my case, that's the pi user. So if we go ahead and hit enter, we won't get anything back, but that command has probably run successfully. It will give you an error if there's any sort of problem. The next thing that we need to do is reevaluate the pi users group membership. Group memberships in Linux are only evaluated whenever the user logs in or logs out. So we can either log out of the Raspberry Pi and log back in again as the Pi user, reboot the Raspberry Pi completely, or we can run the new group Docker command, which forces an evaluation of that group membership. So that's just N-E-W-G-R-P space and then the group name. Now that the Raspberry Pi is in the Docker group and our membership has been re-evaluated, we should be able to go ahead and run the docker run hello world command and run that application without pseudo privileges. And we can see here that that's been successful. So we're correctly added to that group. That's it guys, that's how you get Docker running on a Raspberry Pi. We're going to be playing around with some Docker containers in the future. So go ahead and do the YouTube dance, which is to like, comment, and subscribe on this video, and then you'll be notified about future content. Otherwise, I will catch you guys on the flip side.